Oh, there you are, YouTube. Doo 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 doo. Subscribe if you're interested, but also no pressure. But if you did, I'd greatly appreciate it. Hey, this morning the Oscar nominations were announced. I was unable to watch them. Instead, I was driving my kids to preschool on icy, treacherous, very dangerous, extremely scary roads, nearly sliding into the ditch. But luckily, there was enough gravel on the side of this rural country road that I was able to gain traction, and then I was able to get out of the ditch back onto the road and get the kids to preschool and then everything melted like two hours later and everything was fine. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Oscar nominations have come out and let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at them. Um, now I have not been able to follow awards season so much this year, which is, I feel, I mean, I don't know. I feel like each year that passes, it gets more and more that way. Uh, but this was something that I used to follow all the time. Honestly, I wanted this channel to be an Oscar channel. Like if you go to my very first video that I made nearly four years ago, uh, or whenever it was, March of 2020, uh, I talk about that, how I want to, you know, talk about the, the Oscars. And that was sort of in my, in my head, it was gonna be, you know, a, sort of an Oscar channel, like casual talking about the Oscars as I go through my uh, everyday routine. Didn't happen. Maybe, maybe I could still make it happen. But anyway, um, it's just weird how things have changed. Like, you know, I, I was on um, vacation during the Golden Globes, didn't even watch the Golden Globes. And I haven't like watched, uh, watched it sub like subsequently I, as a replay. And that's just odd for me. I don't even know if I've ever missed a Golden Globe since I was like in junior high. I mean, gosh, even before junior high, I, other than the one they didn't have. But um, yeah, it's just weird how, how things change. If you would tell me that I would, I mean, I was on vacation. I feel like that's okay to miss a Golden Globes. Anyway, let's get to the Oscars. I'm, I keep, uh, I keep tangenting. Anyway, so should we should we end with the 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 high categories, or do we want to start start with below the line? Let's do that, and then we'll end with best picture. Now, a lot of this, like I said, I have not been following the Oscars, so I don't even like, I don't even know some of these films. Like I'm hearing the titles, and I'm like, what is that? I don't I don't even know. I'm just like behind. Like makeup and hairstyling. Let's start with that. Golda. I don't know. Uh, Maestro, okay, that's that Bradley Cooper one. Um, I hear some people love it, other people think it's kind of laughable. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Um, then Oppenheimer, makeup and hairstyling. So are we talking about old Oppie when he's older? That sort of makeup and hairstyling? I mean, I, I know, you know, it, it's, it's beyond that. It's also like the time period and everything. It's not um, uh, just like aging effects and things like that, you know, practical makeup there. But it's what I think of, um, I, like Killian Murphy when he's old Oppenheimer. I remember thinking, oh, it's not, that's not too bad. Um, poor Things, now I haven't even seen this. Yorgos, I, I really want to see it. Um, my wife's not the biggest fan of his films, but I am of some of them. I feel like he's only made one that I was like, no, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a lobster person. That one, that one didn't work for me, but maybe I should rewatch it. Uh, Society of the Snow. I think that's the first time I'm ever reading those words together. All right, let's get into production design. Uh, Barbie. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, my kids are really into Barbie right now. And when you look at all of the toys, like you see that inspiration on the screen. And I love that. Killers of the Flower Moon. Very good. I like the production design there. Uh, Napoleon. Uh, I remember the previews looked good, but then that movie was like, um, nobody really seemed to care for it so I was like all of my hype for it just dropped it like plummeted Oppenheimer yeah okay that's good poor things I hear great things about that one so I poor I hear poor things about it I hear great I hear great things about poor things uh, production design so I'm very excited to watch that movie I'm um, hoping my wife likes it uh, just because it would be nice <laughs> to uh, like a, a Yorgos film together sound the creator the creator, I don't know. Is that a religious film? Uh, Maestro, okay. Music, that makes sense. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Hey, that's cool. I've heard they changed the title of that. Like now, when that movie starts streaming, uh, they, they, they're maybe just calling it Dead Reckoning. And maybe like Dead Reckoning Part 2 has its own new title now. Have you heard about that? And it's sort of a way to... Because... 
uh, Dead Reckoning Part 1 underperformed, so maybe this is a way to, to give the sequel a, a whole fresh new title to make people feel like they don't have to watch Dead Reckoning Part 1 in order to understand 2 or something like that. Um, I, I could be wrong on that, but I feel like I've been hearing news about that. Uh, next is Oppenheimer for sound. Oh, that was good sound. Uh, the Zone of Interest. Um, I... I think I just heard about this movie today. My wife was reading me the synopsis for it, and it sounds like sound is very important to this film. Um, like distant sound um, being heard. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure all of that kind of goes into uh, the thought process there. Um, film editing, Anatomy of a Fall. So this is one I've heard about but don't know much about, but I think I, I saw like some posters for. Uh, but I'm excited to watch it. Um, the Holdovers, film editing. That that is that would be a good one because I I did like the all of the the craft in that movie a lot. Uh, trying to make it look um, you know from uh, the I mean, 70s, right? What what year were we in? I can't remember. Um, what exact year were we in? Like 79? What year was it? I can't remember. But um, Yes, use, using um, techniques and strategies from uh, that era just worked well for that film. I really like that movie. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, okay, yeah, definitely. Oppenheimer, sure. Uh, Poor Things, um, again, I can't wait to watch that one. Documentary short film. I don't, probably don't know any of these. The ABCs of Book Banning, The Barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, The Last Repair Shop, uh, ah, man, I'm probably going to say this wrong. Um, I'm, I'm going to say it wrong. Nay, nay, and way, po. Sorry. Um, I need to learn that one. That's the first time I'm seeing those words. Um, so, okay, next live action short film. Don't know any of these. The After, Invincible, Night of Fortune, Red, White, and Blue, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. I, I need to learn about these films. Same thing with the animated. Letter to a Pig, 95 Senses, Our Uniform. Uh, is this a word I should know? Pachyderm. Pachydermy. Pachydermy. Is that a, that makes me think of a pachydermy. What is that? I don't know. It makes me think of a of a dinosaur or something. Pacha, <laughs> a pachy, pachysaurus. Uh, next is War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, costume design. Here we go. Barbie. Again, I think that one is very uh, important when you think about the fashion that runs alongside Barbie, how important that is to the brand. I think that is uh, a great, fun, cool nomination. And then you have all these different types of Barbies, you know. Uh, that exist, and the, how do you know they are that type of Barbie? Barbie? It's from their costume, uh, by their dress, their outfit. So I think that one is a, a really fun nomination. I think that's cool. Next, Killers of the Flower Moon. Great. Napoleon, um, probably good there. Oppenheimer, period specific. Poor things. We're, we're reading a lot of the same titles. So the, the, the branching out didn't happen too much. As I say that, we move into cinematography, where we have El Conde... Elconda? How do you say that? Help me out. Um, that one I don't even know. That's the first time I'm hearing about this film. Next we have Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh yeah, great cinematography. I, I feel like the only shot so far that's really stunned me that I can think of this year, again I haven't seen too many movies yet, this, this is kind of what this is for, so now I know what I'm going to be watching this year, last year. Um, but Killers of the Flower Moon was sort of the, the first movie that had me stunned uh, for a, a shot. I was just like, man, that's beautiful. I love it. Multiple times, actually. But one one moment in a in a uh, old theater, I was just like, wow, I, I love this. I love what I'm looking at. And then Maestro, um, still haven't seen it. I think it's on Netflix. Oppenheimer cinematography, of course. Uh, and then Poor Things. I'm hearing good things about Poor Things cinematography. Uh, documentary feature film. Okay, I haven't seen any of these. Uh, should I even try these? What is that? 20 Days in Mari Upol, uh, Bobby Wine, The People's President, The Eternal Memory, Four Daughters, and To Kill a Tiger. Don't know any of those. Original Song, It Never Went Away from American Symphony. I don't know that one either. 
Uh, I'm just Ken from Barbie. Okay, that's a fun one. Uh, what was I made for from Barbie? I'm trying to remember. I like that one that, that they're dancing at at the beginning. That one's a lot of fun. And also when they're all kind of like doing Hey Barbies at Lizzo, I think. I'm surprised those two didn't get nominated. I like those a lot. Was it Duo Lipa? How do you say that person's name? Um, you, you know, you have the Lizzo one and then the Duo Lipa. Lipa. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm out of touch with, uh, popular culture right now. Um, then The Fire Inside from Flamin' Hot. I don't know that movie. Oh, man. Okay. Um, and then uh, A Song for My People. I'm going to try and say this word. Was Hazi? Was Hazi? Uh, a Song for My People from Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay. I did love the music in that film and in the credits. I wonder where that uh, song is uh, located in the film. But I do remember when watching that movie, liking the music. So I'm going to guess I'm just Ken will win, right? Probably. Um, it was a good, fun song. Kind of reminds me of that song from Frozen 2, I think, that Kristoff sings. Kind of has that 80s ballad sort of sound to it. Next, we have Original Score, American Fiction. Man, I uh, love Jeffrey Wright so much. One of my favorite actors. I am so... I mean, we'll get to it. I... I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled for this movie. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't even know if it's good, but regardless, I'm happy for Jeffrey Wright. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny for original score too. Uh, awesome. You know, John Williams, um, always, always worthy of everything he does. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, great score. Oppenheimer, great score. Poor Things, can't wait to see it. Visual effects, the creator. What is, oh, the creator. Now I know it's not a religious film. I know what the creator is. It's, um, um, uh, gosh, who did it? Denny? No. Was it? I can't remember. Who? Bloomcamp? Ah, I can't remember who did it. But, um, John David Washington is in it. That's the movie, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to see that. I thought the special effects in the trailers looked really good. Godzilla Minus One, that is very cool. I heard that that's the first time any Godzilla movie's ever been nominated for an Oscar, so that is awesome. Um, it would have been cool if it got more, because I think this is the only nomination for it. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, good. Um, I think I like those movies in the order that they came out in. I do like the conclusion of that trilogy, but I still think I like like them, yeah, in the order they were made. Next is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Okay, yeah, good. I like those effects in there. It was all looking good to me. And then Napoleon, which I did not see. But the trailers looked good, but the word of mouth was bad. Original screenplay, Anatomy of a Fall. Again, uh, just, I think, maybe I've only seen a poster. The Holdovers, that's great. I just like that little engine that could sort of uh, movie there. And plus, it's a Christmas movie, which is cool. Those don't get nominated much anymore like they did back in the day. Um, and the, you know, it's kind of like the that stop motion, um, you know, like the Island of Misfits, right? It's kind of like that. They're, you know, they got the, they are an Island of Misfits. And then Maestro, all right, and then May, December. I thought we might get more from that uh, with Julianne Moore, Natalie Portman maybe popping in. Uh, of course, we'll get to the... Uh, acting nominations later. Past Lives. That's a movie I've heard so much about that I have not seen and I can't wait to watch because it seems like everybody loves it. Adapted Screenplay. Wait, did I mess up there? Did I mess up? Oh no, we're good. Okay, yeah. Adapted Screenplay. American Fiction. Again, Jeffrey Wright uh, is an actor there. I don't, I don't know who wrote it. I, they don't have the names here. They should put the names, not just the film. Um, but American Fiction, then Barbie, which is based off of a toy. That's why it would be adapted. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you know pre like previous, you know, we, we don't, we can watch Barbie and know everything about Barbie without, you know, we, we aren't going in fresh. Um, and then Oppenheimer, and then Poor Things, and then Zone of Interest. Okay. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I gotta watch more of those. I mean, I'd probably give it to Oppenheimer, but I gotta I gotta see the other ones because I've only seen Bar Barbenheimer from that list. Animated feature film: The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, 
Robot Dreams, Spider-Man Across the Universe. Oh, you know who I feel bad for here in this situation? I feel bad for the movie Wish, uh, Disney's animated feature, Disney Studios animated feature, which flopped, failed, um, because that was like sort of meant to help commemorate their 100 year anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. And I just wish it was a big success. Unfortunately, it wasn't. And it's just such a, a sad thing to think about where this country, this country, this company is celebrating 100 years and the movie that they make for it just falls flat. I haven't even seen it. Is it good? I've seen a lot of people say it was actually good, but actually the way that people talk about it is like, it's not that bad. You know, like it's like people, they hear terrible things and then they watch it, like it's not that bad. But you also don't want to hear that because that also means they don't think it's great because they, they're, they're saying it's not that bad instead of, oh wow, it was very good. But I just feel bad for it. I just wish it would have done better. Uh, I haven't seen it myself, uh, probably waiting for streaming. Maybe it's available for streaming now, but I, again, my heart aches for it because I like I like Disney and to to fail on something that means so much just kind of hurts my heart. Um, maybe it didn't fail as hard as I thought though. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I didn't look at the numbers. I just read the headlines. All right, international feature film. Uh, we have one from Italy, Japan, Spain, Germany, and United Kingdom. So let me go through those. Um, oh, interesting. International feature film. Did they change the title of that category again? I think they might have. International feature film. I think they might have. It used to be foreign language film. Um, but then I think they switched it. I thought it was international language. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Lo Capitano from Italy. Perfect Days from Japan. Society of the Snow from Spain. Uh, okay, I read that title earlier. Uh, the Teacher's Lounge, Germany, and then Zone of Interest, United Kingdom. All right. Best Director, uh, Jonathan Glazier for Zone of Interest. Okay, look at that. Hey, that's, that's telling me that that's a really good movie. So uh, definitely putting that one on the list. I mean, I'm going to try and watch all of these, uh, at least the feature-length ones, but we'll see. Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. He's probably going to win that, right? I think Nolan's probably going to finally get that Oscar. Then Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, I like that movie a lot. Uh, I think it's great, but I feel like attitudes toward it, even though it has some nominations here, are also lukewarm, you know, especially when you compare it to the rest of his filmography. It seems like that's the way people think about it, but I thought it was a great movie. I loved it. Um, and then uh, Justine, how do you say that? Try it, try it for Anatomy of a Fall. So we don't have Greta here. Um, also, Past Lives, uh, I think I, I remember hearing a lot of people maybe hoping uh, that uh, the director of uh, yeah, Past Lives would get in. Um, who else? Maybe that is, I, th I was thinking maybe one more uh, people were hoping to get in. Uh, but yeah, Greta, poor Greta, didn't make it in. Um, okay, Best Supporting Actress, Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. I thought she was really good in it. Uh, the emotions she was putting on screen were strong. Um, Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple. Haven't seen that yet, and I hear this Color Purple is a musical. Um, so I always think that's, you know, challenging. Um, uh, so, you know, congrats for that. Nomination, America Ferreira for Barbie. That one I was surprised at, except for when I think of that speech. You know, so many people talked about her speech at the end, and that was a powerful moment for a lot of people, so... I think that does make sense. Jodie Foster for Nyad. Haven't seen that. I don't even like know that movie. I mean, I know Jodie Foster is uh, on um, like the, the new season of like, what is it, Fargo or True Detective or something, True Detective. And that's where my mind's at. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I need to learn about Nyad. I need to learn about it. And then Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. Uh, great there. Um, as a, a supporting actress. Again, I really liked that movie. And I feel like ever since I saw it, I, I'm, my love for it is growing. Best Supporting Actor, Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. Awesome. Uh, Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon. Now that one I am stoked about because I felt like he was being ignored when people were talking about 
uh, that movie, nobody was really talking about him. But when I walked away from that film, he was, to me, the most powerful um, uh, part about it in in terms of like affecting like he just felt so scary but also frail like when i think of robert de niro i think of like a tough guy but he felt like really small and like tiny and petite and terrifying and whatever he was doing with his body and his acting and his voice the way he was walking the way he was shot and filmed i just was like give this man the oscar like i was thinking he was great um, but I, then after I saw the movie, when it had come out, I wasn't hearing anything about it. And I was like, why are people talking about De Niro? I am so glad he got nominated here. I don't know if he's going to win because he's also up against Robert Downey Jr. And a lot of people think, you know, he's, he's ready. He's due for his Oscar win. Uh, but personally, I, of course, I haven't seen American Fiction yet. And I haven't seen Poor Things yet because Mark Ruffalo was nominated for Poor Things. Ryan Gosling for Barbie, which is kind of you know fun and silly I like that um, but if I had to go between De Niro and Robert Downey Jr. I would go De Niro I would vote for De Niro um, I know he has Oscars but I I thought he was scary and such a, a small petite person I don't know I thought his acting was so good in it Okay, next, um, okay, should I talk more about, uh, yeah, so Robert Downey Jr., he was very good, yes, uh, but I also think other people in that movie were very good, like, um, old guy from Minnesota, I can't think of his name right now, you know, from the faculty, Josh Hartnett, he was good, um, uh, Albert Einstein was good, um, I don't know, it was, it was a good ensemble cast, you know who I don't think was good in it? Matt Damon. <laughs> I don't think he was good in it. I just, I just have a tough time seeing him as anybody but himself. Um, then, uh, yeah, Ryan Gosling, like I said, that's just kind of a fun, cool nomination there. And then Mark Ruffalo, haven't seen. Best Actress, Annette Bening for Nyad. So I need to see this. I don't know anything about it. Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. I remember there was a lot of fear. People uh, were thinking maybe she was going to be nominated in Supporting Actress thinking, you know, her role kind of sits on the edge of uh, lead and supporting where will uh, they be placed and um, ended up uh, in Best Actress rather than supporting. And um, yeah, people were, you know, I, I, I remember seeing headlines, where, where is this going to go? Um, and then we have Sandra Huller for Anatomy of Fall. Uh, need to see it. And then Carrie Mulligan for Maestro. Need to see it. And then Emma Stone for Poor Things. So I believe it's a race between Lily and Emma. Um, Lily's won some and Emma has won some. I think Emma won the critics though, which means nothing here. Right? Or did she win Golden Globes? Really, critics and Golden Globes don't matter at all. Sag's where you want to look. Um, but, yeah don't matter because the people who vote for in those um, voting bodies, none of those humans carry over to the Oscars. That's what I'm saying that. So those awards really don't tell you much, maybe about just zeitgeist momentum, but not always. All right. You can't rely on them is what I'm saying. All right, so uh, next we're going to Best Actor. Bradley Cooper for Maestro. I think he looks like um when I was watching him like in a preview or something conduct uh I was thinking he looked like uh, uh Steve Martin like I was like this looks like Steve Martin being funny like conducting so I hope it doesn't come off too humorous for me of course within the context of the movie it probably won't but I don't know you know what Bradley Cooper should have been nominated for and won um um uh, a star is born I am like, he was great. He should have been nominated there and he should have won. He was so good. Of course, maybe he is in Maestro also, but I love him so much in A Star Is Born. I, I, don't, I don't know what my thought was at the time. I think I was thinking he should win um, or be nominated. Uh, he wasn't nominated. Um, but he, had he been nominated, I think he would have got my vote. 
All right, I'll also in Best Actor, so we did Bradley Cooper and Meister. We also have Coleman Domingo from Rustin. What's Rustin? I need to see this movie. Uh, Paul Giamatti from The Holdovers. Awesome. That, that, that would be cool. I love Paul Giamatti. I thought he was good in that. Killian Murphy, though. Oppenheimer. Ooh, so that's probably the race, right? Paul and Killian. Paul and Killian. And as much as I love Paul Giamatti, I'm wondering if I think Killian should get it, though. It's... Uh... I, I could see myself like really wrestling if I was a part of the Academy. What do I do? I love Paul Giamatti and I think he's great in it and I wish he would have been um, nominated and won for Sideways, right? And he didn't. But here he has another chance with the same director. So would I write his name down? But I don't like to do sort of that sort of thought process. But I also think he was really good, which is a thought process that I would like to use for voting. But then we also have Killy Murphy who... Um, like doesn't have this like feeling of overdueness or anything, but I think he gave a very strong, awesome, amazing performance um, with just the, so much weight on his shoulders and you can feel it. Uh, but I also like comedy for Paul Giamatti. So what do you, what do we do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I would do. I might have to flip a coin or I would just, even though I think Killian maybe gave the more impressive performance, I guess. I don't, you know, I don't want to sound negative towards Paul, because I, I don't mean that at all, but I I don't know, I might I might vote Killian, I don't know. I'm still working this through my head. And then Jeffrey Wright, just, you know, this is amazing. Paul Giamatti and Jeffrey Wright, if I had to give like top uh, five favorite working actors right now, I, I mean, they, they would probably be there. Um, both great, so I, I'm just so happy for Jeffrey Wright. Love Jeffrey Wright. Watch Basquiat if you haven't seen Basquiat. Um, I mean, I even like him in the in the Hunger Game movies. Hunger Games. He's he's great Commissioner Gordon. I think I think he's a good Commissioner Gordon. Um, I what else have I what else do I like him in? Um, I mean, he, I, oh oh Westworld. Gosh, so good in that. I lost track of that show, but when when he was on it in the early seasons, a season it was wonderful. Okay, so again, um, I don't know what I'm going to do there. I have no clue. All right, let's get into picture, picture, best picture Oscar. Um, we have American Fiction, which is so cool, again, because I'm just so happy for Jeffrey Wright. Then Anatomy of a Fall, a movie that I need to see. I haven't seen it. I've only looked at the poster. Then Barbie, that's fun. Look at that. Barbie made it in, which I, here's the thing. Like, some people may be like, well, come on, that movie's not really that good. Um... Here's the thing. I think best picture means a lot of things. Sometimes it can mean, you know, quality, objective quality, whatever that means. Uh, but I also think it can mean cultural moment sort of thing. Like, what did it do? Is it the, was it the best picture to create like a cultural moment? And I feel like together Barbie and Oppenheimer sort of did that. So Oppenheimer, I understand getting nominated for its, you know, it's, it's it's an objectively great film, but if you if you don't think Barbie qualifies because you know like Will Ferrell's weird and silly in it, um, I mean that's my reason. Like some of the Will Ferrell stuff, I'm like, oh, this feels like the Spice Girls movie or something. Um, like, okay, but also think about the power behind that movie, getting people to the theater, um, the uh, the way people were speaking about it online, the way it was being discussed. Um, um, I like all of that, the, the excitement f to see it. Like, I feel like that counts too. Same thing. I don't know. A, a lot of movies, uh, that happens with, and I, and I think they deserve uh, a best picture nomination for that. Um, like, I mean, I don't like there are Marvel movies that have come out that, well, Black Panther was nominated and I think, you know, it kind of created this cultural moment, but there are other superhero movies that I feel like should have been nominated also for sort of doing that. Like Endgame, in a way, I think that would have been great. Um, uh, gosh, you know, The Matrix, I think that one would have been a great Best Picture nominee because of sort of what it did to the culture in that moment. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it just, some things just, you can feel the punch of, hey, we are putting a footprint in the ground and we will be a remembered movie. So I, I like that 
being included in what best means. Um, even if it's not remembered years and years from now, but even in the moment, because that's what this is, of the year. And Barbie, even if you don't think it's a good movie, even if you think it's Spice Girls level at the end, um, when it comes to what it did this year, it was the best at that, you know? So I'm, I'm cool with that. The Holdovers, the little engine that could, uh, yeah, again, my, my love for this movie only grows. Killers of Flower Moon, I think was great, wonderful, uh, movie. And then Maestro, uh, I'm excited to see it, even though I'm like confused by it. Oppenheimer, great, powerful, wonderful movie there. Uh, past lives I'm hearing so many great things about can't wait to see that poor things same thing I'm wondering though if poor things will become my favorite because I I like I like the weird and I hear it's weird salt burns not on here I didn't see salt burn at all anywhere uh, that's kind of interesting because I heard a lot of I mean that I hear that movie is weird too and maybe it's too weird for the Academy but they did that triangle of sadness you know who knows uh, and then zone of interest um, don't know much about that other than uh, what the synopsis that my wife read to me. So anyway, you just heard thoughts on the Oscar nam nominations from somebody who has not been following the awards season this year. I've not been able to, just been a little busy, been busy with work, then busy with vacation, and then busy with making up work because I took a vacation. And you know, holidays too. It's just been, it's been it's been tough. So I've not been able to follow this as much as I want to, um, as much as I used to. Like, again, like this used to be, I was always glued to my desktop back in the day. Just, you know, r reading, reading Oscar stuff, doing my prognostication, um, guessing. Uh, I, I, it, I, I love it. I do. I still love it. It's just, you know, life gets in the way. Life gets in the way of uh, some some hobbies that you love. I got maybe I should find a way to make this my life. That's what I should do. Um, actually, I think that was probably my plan with the with the YouTube. That was like maybe I can find a way to make this my life. But you know, uh, it's tough. Uh, I probably should stop making videos every single day and just make like a really good Oscar video throughout the week and post it at the end of the week or something. I don't know. Um, but I also like streaks of of uh, doing something daily. So I don't know, I think I love that more. So that's why I do the daily the daily videos. All right, so um, tell me what your thoughts are on this. What were your fears? What were your hopes? Which things came into fruition that you wanted to? What um, What's your favorite movie on this list? What's mine? Gosh, I don't even know. I mean, probably, I mean, it might be Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't seen Year Zero yet, uh, but maybe if I watch that one, that one will be. But I think I think maybe Mission Impossible might be my favorite movie on this entire list. Uh, I haven't even seen Dial of Destiny. You know, I like Barbie. I like Oppenheimer. I, I love Killers of the Flower Moon. I like um, uh, The Holdovers. And, I, and that my love for that one's growing, but honestly. And I haven't seen Spider-Verse yet. Uh, Elemental was nice. I don't think I watched that one all the way through, though. My kids had it on, but I didn't finish it. But yeah, I think I think Mission Impossible is my favorite movie on this list. <laughs> but I can see it being poor things based on what I'm hearing about it. But who knows? Um, I can't wait to get through these. I'm going to try and watch these and, and review them as I go through them uh, before the actual Oscars. Are you excited for the Oscars? Do you watch the Oscars? Look at that. I'm at almost at 35 minutes, so I should probably shut this down, but thank you so much for listening to me ramble, especially because it's almost like I don't know anything about this this year. Um, I'm just, it's all periphery to me, which I think is an interesting way to go in. Um, I'm going to probably start with maybe watching some trailers and then watching some movies. Um, and I'll, I'll try and get back to everybody on, on my thoughts if you're interested. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And perhaps we'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.